Hi folks, welcome to Analytics Every Day. My name is Chirantan and thank you for choosing us. So last Saturday we had uploaded a video uh, which is from my data analytics cohort which goes, which, you know, which takes place on the weekends. Uh, so, you know, last weekend we had covered statistics and this weekend we will be covering Excel for data analysis. Uh, today, uh, the topic that I'm going to cover is basically I am going to implement IQR, which is the interquartile range. So I'm going to implement IQR in Excel and we're also going to plot some percentiles. Okay. So IQR or interquartile range is super important when it comes to outlier detection. Uh, I highly urge you all to watch my lecture. Uh, which I uploaded last uh, Saturday, which is State Analytics Cohort, it's the Statistics Lecture 2. Uh, and I'll be also, you know, mentioning the link here in the description. You can go and definitely watch that lecture. Now, why Excel? Basically, Excel, you know, it happens to be like the underdog and the father of data science. So I thought, why not, you know, uh, implement IQR in Excel and show it to you guys. I'm sure you must have seen this diagram if you're taking you know a statistics course you must have definitely seen this diagram uh, this is nothing but what we call as a box whisker plot okay uh, the reason is you can see the box and these are the whiskers okay and hence the name box whisker plot okay this is nothing but what the interquartile range is it's shown here an interquartile range will def you know it will eat up into 50% of your data so 50% of your data is going to lie within the interquartile range okay what's interquartile range interquartile range is nothing but q3 minus q1 okay this q3 which is the 75th percentile minus q1 which is the 25th percentile so the 75th percentile minus the 25th percentile is give going to give the interquartile range all right on the left and on the right you can see that there are whiskers okay which are nothing but the minimum values and the maximum values okay so all the values on the right of the maximum or the uh, we also call it as the upper fence okay so all the values on the right or the upper fence right of the upper fence are outliers all the values on the left of the lower fence or the minimum value are the outliers but how do they exactly look that is what we are going to uh, that is what we are going to see today so basically when it comes to you know IQR IQR you know we have to understand the concept of five point summary okay so the concept of five point summary goes something like this okay we have to find the minimum value we have to find the maximum value we have to find the Q1, Q3 and the median, all right? In the, in the data set, okay, whatever your data set is, how many data set points are, okay, all the records, for all the records, we have to find a five point summary in which we have to calculate a minimum, maximum, Q1, Q3 and a median. And that is what will create your box plot, all right? This happens to be the minimum value, this happens to be the maximum value. This is your Q1. This is your Q3. And that's your median. Okay. So this is what forms your IQR. All right. Formula wise, if you want to understand what the formulas are, minimum is basically, you know, whatever the minimum value is there in your data set. Maximum is the maximum value in your data set. Q1 is basically the point which lies on the 25th percentile of my data set. Q3 is 75th percentile data point. I would highly urge you guys to watch that lecture. In that lecture, I have uh, explained in detail the concept of percentiles, how to calculate the percentiles and which value lies at what percentile. Okay. I've also covered that in detail and there's a difference in calculation all right to calculate the percentile and to calculate which value lies at which percentile okay for example if I want to calculate the value that lies at 25th percentile so the value that I'll get is nothing but the index position 
and I'll check for that index position in that data set. All right. And uh, so, yeah, and the median. Median is, not, median is nothing but the, what is the exact centermost value, all right? So if it's like an odd value, uh, if the number of elements in your data set are odd, okay, is like the number of elements in your data set are odd, we take the centermost value, all right? And if the number of elements in your data set are even, we take the middle two values, okay? We take the middle two values, we divide them by two, and whatever value comes, that is nothing but your median, okay? So we are going to implement the same in Excel. If you guys want me to implement in Python and R, do let me know in the comment section below. So I'll also cover that video where we will be implementing this uh, in, you know, in Python or R. All right. Okay. So let's, let's look at the concept of percentile. So here, what do I have? I basically have sales of product A and product B. Okay. This sales is in USD and we don't have the tenure. Okay. So let's consider like, for example, this is the tenure for uh, every single month. Okay. So for example, in Jan of say 2021, product A was, you know, sales of product A was around $323 and that of B was $435, so on and so forth. How many records do we have? Uh, let, let us just check. Okay, so we have around like what, 28, okay, the count is 28, so we are having 28 records in our data set, all right, we have 28 records in our data set. So let's do one thing, okay, let's calculate the value, okay, let us calculate the value which lies on the 90th percentile, or let's calculate what is, what is the value at, the value at. 90th percentile okay so how do i calculate what is uh, the value at 98th percentile the formula is pretty simple i will take percentile dot excluding which is exe okay and if i just keep my mouse or which I, if i just hover my mouse there you can see returns the kth percentile of values in a range where k is 0 1 2 so on and so forth exclusive all right so we'll be taking this, if you take percentile including or just percentile, there's a very, very minor difference in the same, but it's highly recommended you guys to take per percentile excluding. All right, I'll take that. We're taking the eighth column, which is product A, and we want to check the 90th percentile. All right, so what does 90th percentile comes down to? It comes down to 878.4, okay? Let me just uh, print out the formula here. All right, so you can see the formula here, which is this thing. We are looking at the, we're taking the eighth column and we're checking the ninth, uh, 90th percentile and this comes out to be the value. What does this mean now? Okay, we've got the value as 878.4. Okay, so in the concept of uh, percentile, when we have got a value of 90th percentile as 878.4, this means that 90% of the values in my data set, okay, I repeat, 90% of the values in my data set lie below 878.4, okay, and hence we say that 878.4 lies at the 90th percentile, okay, and top 10% of the values, top 10 percentile of the values, or per, per, top 10 percent of the values, lie above 878.4 let's go back to the data set okay 878.4 okay so above 8 878.4 those are all the top 10 percent values about a about 878 what that'll be what 900 then 878 q per you know you have to you have to check the values here uh, you and basically if you just hover it you can you can get to know what all are the values that you can get you know below 878 and those are basically the top 10 percent of your values so basically if you have like what 28 records top 10 percent won't be you know 28 ka 10 percent okay 2.8 so more, not more than two or three values will be you know above that let's also look at the 90th 
percentile for column B. Okay. Mm, column B. All right. So it's one to one zero. Okay. It's one to one zero point eight. Again, ten percent of the values which are above one to one zero. See, for example, this value, this value. You know, ten percent of the values which are beyond one to one zero point eight, they are all the top ten percent of the values. All right. So again, ten percent of twenty eight, not more than two to three values will be below, will be in the top ten percent. So we already have like two values in top ten percent. That is how basically we calculate percentile. Okay. Now let's take a condition. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Well, let's do one thing. Let's also calculate the average for product A. Okay. Ah, uh, let's just look at. Okay. Sorry. Ah. Uh, okay. So the average is what? It's five thirty eight. It's five thirty eight point one four. That is the average sales we can say in the tenure for product A. Similarly, we can calculate the average for product. B and what's it? It's what seven ninety seven. Okay, that's basically the. So you can see that there's a good amount of difference in the average sales of product A and product B. So you can see that you know maybe uh, because we have values like maybe we can say that the app you know it's it's very. You can basically easily make make out that you know the average sales of product A is much lesser. Or comparatively lesser as compared to that of product B. Now, what if we <coughs> take a statement something like this? For example, uh, what if the management wants to see the average? Okay, what if they want to see the uh, average when we remove the top and the bottom ten percentile? Okay, what if we want average of sales? After removing top ten and the top ten percentile and the bottom ten percentile, all right? You you never know, okay? If if, yeah. if your management asks you to come up with something like this, now how how do we calculate that? Okay, the formula for this is is simple and twisted at the same time, okay? Because we have multiple conditions in which we want to calculate average. We'll be taking up average if s, okay. Average if s finds average that is arithmetic mean for sales specified by the given set of conditions and criteria. Because we have multiple conditions, we don't have a conditions. Condition we have conditions. We want to find the top ten percentile. If we want to remove the top ten percentile, we want to remove the bottom ten percentile. Okay. So the middle eighty percent of the data is what uh, the management wants. So let's take that. They are asking us for the average range. What range are we looking at? Okay. Let's say if we are doing this for product A. Okay. So product A का range क्या होगा? Product A का range होगा from here to here. Okay. Comma. Now what is the criteria? The let's put the criteria. The criteria is something like. Okay. Let me just copy paste this. The criteria is something like it should be, for example, this range should be greater than or equal to let's take the percentile. What is the percentile? Again, we are taking the percentile range. Okay, and we want to exclude the bottom ten percentile. Okay, comma. Okay, so we want something which is greater than the bottom ten percentile. Okay, and something which is less than the top ten percentile and the bottom ten percentile. Okay, so we'll be again taking this. Okay, let's just copy paste it all over again. So sorry for that. Okay, what's the wrong? Okay, just a second. Let let us write it again. Um, mm -hmm, okay, it comes to A seven to A thirty four. Okay, 
they should be greater than or equal to it should be greater than or equal to what it should be greater than or equal to the percentile okay and what percentile are we talking here we are talking about the bottom 10 percentile okay so it comes down to 0 0.10 comma we'll be again taking this which is nothing but our range and this has to be less than or equal to this has to be less than or equal to what percentile <coughs> again this range okay comma 0 0.90 all right so we have a value here let me just take out the formula text okay so you can see the formula you know it seems like a bit twisted at the start but let me just explain it to you guys it's pretty easy okay so what the management have asked us is that if you want to find the average of the sales after removing the bottom 10 percentile and the top 10 percentile what we are doing here is that we are taking average fs because we have multiple conditions okay and then we ask the, we ask excel basically to find out you know give us something which is greater than the top 10 percentile and something which is less than the 90 percentile so the middle 80 percent of the data is perc percent of the data is what we are looking at and the value comes out to be 546.1 one six 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 so on and so forth and that is how basically what you can calculate the percentiles okay now let's understand the concept of box whisker plot okay we have just discussed what a box whisker plot looks like and for the box whisker plot it is super important to understand how a five point summary works okay how a five point summary works okay so five point summary what, what is five point summary it's min then it's q1 Okay, I'm sorry for that q1 then we have the maximum value then we have the median value and then we have q3 right so if I want to calculate the minimum value I'll just put in quartile okay minimum of what let's say we are looking at sales of a comma you can see that you know when I put comma I already get you know all the like the uh, you know it's like the auto suggestions so for example in order to find the minimum value i should put in zero and that's the minimum value okay so for similarly for the first quartile for the first quartile is nothing but the 25 percentile value okay what's the array we're looking at a what do i want i want one and that gives me the 25th percentile value similarly for maximum what am i looking at quartile array again and 4 is the maximum value right all right we're looking at the median now okay sorry for that for median similarly what do i take i take 2 right 2 gives me the median value and for q3 what do i take for Q3, I'll be taking uh, uh, the third quartile, that is 3. All right. So you can see that we have got the five point summary. Okay. We have got all the five point summary data. Uh, for median, you can, you know, you can also use this formula. If you want to find the median, you know, it's absolutely fine. It again gives you like the, you know, it basically gives you the same value. So it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, if you want me to you know again put down the formula you can see it here okay all right so we have got the five point summary all right let's also calculate the average okay let's also calculate the average for a so the average of a comes out to be what 5262.32 all right now we what we'll do is that we'll basically now we will start plotting box whisker plot okay how do i plot a box whisker plot it's pretty easy okay 
I just need to select the column. I need to go to insert, recommend charts, all charts. I'll go to box whisker and I'll just put in OK. Right? Uh, we don't want a chart title. We want, we don't want grid lines. We want all the data labels. Where do we want the data labels? We want it on the left. Right? Do we want legends? Maybe. No, no need. All right. So if I just drag it here, okay, and let us just bold those values and like increase the number. Let us just change this thing. Yeah, it looks pretty ugly. All right. All right. So this is nothing but what my interquartile range looks like. So you can see minimum 270 is the value. Okay, that's the minimum value here 270. Maximum value is double nine double four. Okay, double nine double four happens to be the maximum value. Q1 value is nothing but the what is 3582. Q3 value is nothing but what it is. You know, 7776. And you know, you can also find IQR, which is nothing but Q3 minus Q1. What's wrong? Okay. Is it not showing so? Ah, uh, it's Q3 minus Q1. Ah, oh, oh sorry, I think I. <laughs> so the IQR is nothing but you know the value of interquartile range is nothing but 4194, and that is how basically you can plot an interquartile range. So all the values which are, you know, uh, which are beyond 9194, okay. All the values which are beyond either 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 your values I can all the points here and all the points here they will be nothing but your outliers. Okay, this is nothing but how you implement IQR in uh, Excel. That is how you implement a box whisker plot. We can do similar for you know we can similarly do it for uh, sales B as well or just need to again insert go to all charts go to box whisker just implement it and you know we don't need the grid lines we need the data labels we need it on the left and we need the axis yeah i do uh all right so you can see that you know the you can see the median that has been shifted a bit to the right actually here in this case as compared to this the median is you know a bit of you know center as compared to this for example for b so oh sorry that is too much overacting okay then you can see that you know again the values that are minimum happens to be what like zero and the maximum happens to be like nine five zero five and that is how you can plot uh, you know the box whisker plot for sales A and sales B and you can produce it to the management okay that is very much it guys do let me know if you want me to you know implement the same on python or r i'll do the same all right thank you so much guys thank you so much